show you what needs to be done to this 34 picked to get it ready for boost. These carvies already lend themselves really well to being boosted in a small horsepower budget application. Um, the other factors that need to be discussed before we go ahead and do this is what else is going on inside the carby when you are turbocharging it. One thing that you need to understand is that the fuel bowl is being pressurized as well as the Venturi when your turbo is working. Um, this plays havoc, especially if you're contemplating on running the original mechanical pump. You can modify them, but you're better off deleting it, put an electric fuel pump, and then you're going to have to get yourself a rising fuel regulator. All right, so basically, as this guy here sees one pound of boost, it will increase your fuel by one pound or whatever is predetermined by the manufacturer. Now, you need to get one suitable for carby. These are not the same as what you find in your fuel injection. They're a completely different animal altogether. What will happen if you don't use one is if your mechanical pump is putting out 5 psi, as soon as you reach 5 pound of boost, your fuel pressure can't overcome the, the uh, boost pressure that it's seen inside the fuel bowl. It'll reach a stalemate where basically you have equilibrium there, where the fuel can't, over, can't overcome the boost pressure that's sitting in there, and your fuel will empty, and basically your engine's going to go lean, and if you're lucky, um, the damage won't be too severe. So what we need to do is we need to also cover a few other things during the modification. We need to modify our ignition. So you need to turn around and just grab your basic V-Dub Dizzy. You're going to have to turn around and just turn it into a lock distributor, which I'll show you how to do that later on. And that way you can turn around and preset your, um, your timing value and it's not going to alter it. It's not ideal to do it that way, but if you're looking at boosting the 34 picked, you're looking at a budget build anyway. Two halves are now separated, and we'll just concentrate on the top half, which has the choke mechanism. This needs to be removed. We need to remove the shaft that goes through. We need to remove the butterfly, and we need to remove the choke mechanism. Now, the void that is left behind, you're going to have to tap it and put some grub screws with Loctite in there to seal that off 100%, so that any air pressure that... It, the Venturi C's can't escape out those two holes. So essentially you're going to have no choke once you do these modifications. The other thing you'll find is the needle and seat. This needle and seat will work fine, but when you reach the upper limits of trying to squeeze as much boost or as much horsepower out of your um, setup as possible, you'll find that eventually that needle and seat will let you down. Once this happens, there's no point sugarcoating it, you're fucked. There's no way you're going to get any extra fuel into that bowl. That needle and seat just can't pass it. So it's probably time to move on and go beyond your budget boost turbo special build on the cheap and move on to something with a, a bit more horsepower. Um, which brings us to the next part of our build, the uh, float. Um, these guys come out with a few floats. Um, personally, I prefer the original equipment, the stock ones. Um, you can run these carbies on E85, um, you just got to increase your jetting. Uh, the only issue, once again, needle and seat, so you'll end up finding you'll be turning the boost down because your fuel flow won't be enough to cater for the uh, demand with E85. Also, the stock um, floats don't like E85. After time, they turn around and they get soft and brittle and start corroding. Whereas these stock ones here tend to behave a lot better with E85. Um, they're the original style. I prefer these. Um, but in part saying that, um, majority of the time you just run these on 98. That's good enough. Which brings us to the jetting. Um, I'm not going to discuss the jetting. You can figure that out. You can go lash out and buy yourself a AFR meter and work out exactly what's needed. Um, a lot of people turn around and say drill the jets. 
I'll just let you know one thing. If you ever look at a jet, hold it up to the light, you'll see that it is not a parallel hull. It's actually a taper. It's designed to be a Venturi, draw fuel in, speed it up, and spit it out the other way. Um, as soon as you drill a jet out, essentially you're going backwards in two jet sizes. So when you drill a jet out, which you're going to have to because there's not a massive variety, it's not like you can turn around and go get a holly kit and change the jets as easy as a holly. Um, with the V-dubs, I find you're probably going to have to solder them up, drill them out, but just remember you're going to have to increase the jets a lot larger than what you initially need because they go down in jet size as soon as that hole becomes parallel then their flow characteristics slow down um, some people remove jets uh, they're complete flogs absolute muppets who don't know how carbies work um, then we come to the emulsion tube this is a guy that we need to modify he's the one who's going to change your carby for boost um, the idea behind the emulsion tube is as the fuel's coming out uh, and being dispersed into the venturi through this nozzle here, it's being aerated. Um, we don't want that. When our turbo comes on to boost, we don't want these little holes here introducing air and diluting the fuel down. We want as much fuel in there as possible. So this is another thing we have to modify. It can't remain standard. So that's our emulsion tube, which I've now drawn over here. This is a basic view of the 34 picked. Um, you would have a jet here, and our actual emulsion um, tube screws in here like this. It comes down there like that. When you set your fuel height, it may be there. As boost increases and the demand for fuel is more, the fuel will flow down through your jet, go through the jet into the well under the emulsion tube, and then come out through a venturi action and be dispersed down inside the venturi like this. What the emulsion tube does is it has a series of holes at certain levels. And what happens is as your fuel level decreases in the bowl, as the demand for fuel is higher because of the vacuum or the amount of um, CFM that passes over and through the venturi, um, that probably would be more shaped like that. So that basically as the air is coming in, it is speeding up and changing from a high pressure to a low pressure, which creates a vacuum that draws the fuel out of this circuit here. When it does this, the fuel decreases in height. As it decreases in height, it uncovers one of these progressive holes. The idea behind is at the very end of this emulsion tube here, there is an air bleed. It introduces fine, minute air bubbles into the circuit so that it's not just raw fuel that comes out. The little bubbles help atomize and slow down the um, response of the carby from going super, super rich. Now, that's good when we're running a stock 34 pick. When we're under boost, we don't want any air introduced. And this is the thing that we have to do we have to change this emulsion tube and alter our fuel curve from stock to suit the demand of the turbo. And we do this quite simply. We have to change how the holes are. This is one I've done earlier. You can see that there aren't any holes. The only hole that is left is the hole at the top and the reason for that is because that air is introduced to help with your idle and your progression when we're under full load 
we don't want any air introduced. We want that mixture to be as rich as possible. But when we're cruising around on idle or on cruise on light throttle, we don't mind a little bit of air introduced to give us a better air fuel ratio when the demand isn't needed. Right, so now we're left with our emulsion tube that we've soldered up. We've also got to make sure that the hole down the center of it hasn't got any solder in there because you still need this to introduce air. If you find at a later stage that you cannot get your mixtures rich enough without modifying the jet size, then you can solder up the end and then using needle drills, change the sizing of your air bleed that way. And that will alter your fuel curve to suit um, coming from idle through to progression through to full throttle. Now, um, because it's a single barrel, we don't have secondaries. We only have full or wide open throttle. Um, in saying that, we need to understand how the fuel's been delivered. So if I clear this up a little bit, On idle, the fuel is introduced through a hole underneath the throttle blade. So let's just put it there for argument's sake. And the fuel comes in and dribbles down, goes into your inlet manifold under here to the cylinders. When we go from idle into progression, the blade is changing. So it's no longer like that. It's probably looking more like that. And air is able to come in and fuel between the sides. And obviously when we go to wide open throttle, we're going to look something like this. One of the problems you have is if you increase your jets and drill your jet right out, oversized, put a huge drill through there, what will happen is you'll create a siphon where there's no resistance from the jet because the jet no longer has a, a venturi inside of it. It no longer looks like that. It is now gone parallel, which basically what happens is when the car's idling, you're going to see a flow of fuel, a shitload of fuel come out of it. So what you need to do is to make sure that the air bleed up at this emulsion tube here at the very top is big enough to create an, um, an introduction of air to reduce an air lock so that the fuel won't automatically siphon in and out. The reason it is siphoning is because your fuel level is at this point and this is now lower than your fuel level. So obviously it's the fuel is just going to create the siphon just from the... Um, flow of air past it and it will just siphon like a hose straight out your carby. So one of the most important things is don't fully solder up the emulsion tube. Make sure that the hole is clear of solder and then you won't have any issues in regards to fuel flowing uncontrollably into the carby. So we now place the emulsion tube back into the body of the 34 picked. Um, make sure that it's screwed down and seated down because you don't want it to introduce any extra air that it doesn't have to. Replace your jet with a stock jet and um, check your AFRs. Slowly creep up on the boost. Set your idle exactly the same as what you would with the normal 34 picked. Use your air bypass as opposed to trying to open the throttle a little bit. As soon as you open the throttle a little bit, you go from your idle circuit into your progression circuit, which is just going to make life an absolute pain in the ass trying to get your mixtures right, especially on idle and cruise. So try and avoid setting a high idle by altering where that throttle blade sits as it starts introducing more fuel through these little progressive holes here in the body. Um, 
once you've in, you've set the um, idle with your idle mixture screw, then adjusted it with your air bleed. If you find coming off idle that there is a stumble, that's where the beauty of the 34 pick comes into place. You can adjust this to increase or prolong the fuel delivery. And that's what I do. I put it right up to pretty close to being at the maximum point on the cam. And it gives a nice long squirt over the duration of that throttle. So it helps when you're tipping in and the throttle's going from idle to progression. It helps the introduction of more fuel so that you don't get a hesitation and a stumble. Um, this is usually, um, you usually know when this occurs because you'll get a backfire through the carbies. It, it, that, that's a sign that you're running lean. Um, worst case scenario, if you find that coming off through that idle into progression that the cam hasn't fixed it, then you might need to open up the idle jet in here and go up a little bit in size and introduce a little bit more fuel through that progressive um, stage. When you're in the secondary wide open, that's where your main jet would do all the, all the, all the metering from then onwards. Um, another thing that you will need to consider is the top. The top plate on the carby itself has a taper to it. It really is makes life difficult, especially if you're going to clamp on a hose. It will blow off, and it will blow off every time from here. I usually, when I modify these... I tend to mill out the choke because that is no longer there. Remember, we've removed this. We've removed this actual choke flap and we've turned around and tapped or put some bolts in here to seal it up so that no air can go from inside the Venturi to out. And then I put a ring around it and make sure that I press a ring on there and I run a couple of grub screws with the ring and that gives me a good... Um, surface for a um, silicon hose to clamp down onto and because I'm guaranteeing you when they pop off they always pop off the top here because of this taper so that's something you're going to have to address. So with a little sensible modification this will be a good carby under boost. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, as far as PSI goes um, that's a whole lot of bullshit. I mean, it's not about the PSI you run, it's about the CFM you can get through a motor. And to be honest, you're running a stock 34 pick, you're running a stock manifold, stock head, stock springs, you're not going to be able to push the engine that hard without having catastrophic results. In saying that, I don't know if that will work with your combination, but I do know that what I have explained and the modifications that I have done do work, have worked for others, and I'm just sharing it with you so that you can have a crack and build a 34 pick for boost. With sensible jetting and understanding how the carby will work under boost, you're going to get results. They're going to be positive results. They're not going to be massive results in the sense of hundreds and hundreds of horsepower. It's just not going to happen. But you will get a sensible gain in horsepower and torque. If you found that you like this video, and there's enough interest generated, click subscribe and I will update the next part of this series which is modifying a stock distributor for boost and um, I look forward to making that video and hopefully today's little video has helped you somewhat. Hopefully this has helped a few of you. It's not rocket science, it's pretty simple. There's no black magic behind boosting the 34 pit. Um, 